Comic Book Savant, episode 477. Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode, we're going to try a new format out. This was suggested by Savant Society member Paul Beverly. Um, His suggestion was for me to recommend uh, more stories uh, that I liked to you guys and kind of that are a little bit like more short form so he gave me the challenge of picking a storyline crossover um, mini series or a run on on a comic book that stands out to me personally and discuss why it means so much to me and suggest it to you guys so I hope you enjoy it it's, this is going to be first of many new episode formats I'm going to be trying out coming up on the on the podcast uh, similar to what I did a few episodes back with the retro review also um, that was suggested by a fellow uh, community member uh, so it, it's going to be rolling out different ideas like this that you guys uh, suggest to me that you want me to try I'm going to be calling this series the long and short of it this is going to be first of many it's going to be uh, a, a new format episode format that I'll you know rotate you know in and out uh, we have so many now, so uh, I thought this would be cool. Um, they po- um, I posted a question at the very beginning of the year about different things that you guys as listeners would like to hear me do or, or, or talk about just to change it up because I, I like to keep things fresh after, you know, what, 14 going on 15 years. I, I like to keep ideas fresh and keep uh, innovating and give you guys content that you want to hear from me, plus things that are going to be fun for me to do. And I, I had never really thought about this uh, till he suggested it, and I got super excited. So I'm looking forward to the long and short of it. Uh, the what book we're going to cover for this first ep- uh, episode is going to be The Omega Effect. Um, it's a crossover between... Uh, The Inventing Spider-Man title, Daredevil, and Punisher back in uh, 2011. But before we get into that, as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my friends over at the Comics Podcast Network. You can find them over at comicspodcast.com. It's a great place to go if you like listening to the content that you found here. You want to find more comic book related content to consume. It's a great one-stop shop to go to. Uh, there are literally hundreds of different podcasts listed there that are uh, on the topic of comics. Uh, they're broken down by, uh, you know, genre, publisher. Uh, you have a single person podcast like myself, roundtable discussions, group discussions, things of that nature. So, again, if you're just looking for more uh, comic book content to consume, it's a great one stop shop to uh, check out. So if you have a moment, stop by the Comics Podcast Network. Um And it's a great resource. Now to get into the meat of the episode, again, the event in which we're talking about is a crossover, a three-issue crossover called The Omega Effect, uh, published by Marvel Comics. It was written by Greg Rucka and Mark Wade. Artwork is done by uh, Marco Cicchetto. Uh, Colorist on the books books from uh, Matt Hollingsworth. Lettering done by Joe Carmenga. It collects, it is um, the issues that you would need to read this series uh, is Avenging Spider-Man uh, issue six, and Avenging Spider-Man ran from 2011 to 2013. Uh, the Daredevil series is the first Mark Wade uh, run on Daredevil in the more current sense, uh, which ran from 2011 through 2014, and that's issue number 11. And Greg Rucka's Punisher book that ran from. Uh, 2011 through 2012 and this is issue number 10 uh the breakdown is as follows the omega effect begins spider-man daredevil punisher a race to find treasure that could tip the scales of justice in the hero's favor will the heroes be able to overcome their differences for the greater good um this was a fun little um mini series that came out at the time all these books well, I know at least Daredevil at the time and Punisher were part of Marvel's Big Shots initiative where they had really big creators. Uh, it, was a, it was a handful of books that were covered under Big Shots. I want to say it was like more all street level characters. Cause I think it was this Daredevil, Punisher. I think Bendis's Moon Knight at the time was out and I think it fell under Big Shots. But it was only like three or four books maybe. 
Avenging Spider-Man, I don't think, was covered under that, but they used it for whatever reason. Because I think Avenging Spider-Man was like a team-up kind of book that they put out. It was a short-lived book. I never read the series. I just read this one issue because of the crossover. I thought it was a cool crossover event. Um, It was... um, I'm a huge Greg Rucka fan. I'm a huge Mark Wade fan. Um, I was reading both titles. I saw the build-up for it. Um, I It just really caught my interest and I was I had fallen in love with Marco Tacheco's pencils on Punisher so to see that he was crossing over doing these three issues and they were sharing the writing duties just immediately appealed to me um and I've gone back and I read this a few times and actually for this episode I read read it again and you know it's not the most grandiose storyline um I don't want to spoil too much but basically um Daredevil comes across a a um, a uh, supercomputer that's in the form of a uh, a a broken off Fantastic Four symbol from one of their costumes that that's made from unstable molecules. Some uh, some criminal syndicate took that and made it into a supercomputer because Reed Richards and the unstable molecules they made it into this jump drive full of information basically t- tipping off or giving vital information to all the different criminal organizations like Hydra and uh, all these other organizations like that, um, Roxxon, um, all these villainous corporation industries, um, organizations in the Marvel Universe. So they're fighting over getting it. They're coming after Daredevil because they know they have it and um, he needs help. So he seeks out Punisher and and um Spider-Man to kind of help him uh get rid of this uh and, and use it as a ploy to uh draw out all of these organizations so they can try to take them down and the conflict comes you know uh they all have their special way of fighting crime and their philosophies don't always match up so and they've had tenuous relationships slash friendships in the past or or alliances so all that comes into question in in this storyline. So it's a really good, quick read. Um, you can find all these books digitally because it's only a three issue. They've the issues I think have been collected, but I don't think you can get this whole series in one trade. Is this easier? I guess to get it digitally it, is just like going Comicsology, or if you have something like Marvel Unlimited, you should be able to find all these issues. They're, they should definitely be on those services. Um, I went back and I bought all of these. Well, I had the Daredevil issue already. I had the Punisher issue already. And I think a little while ago, because I wanted to reread this before the series, I bought the Avenging Spider-Man issue uh, digitally. So um, that might be the easiest way to get it because it's not covered in one any one collection that I'm aware of. If, if it is, you can let me know. Shoot me an email so I can amend this or pin this or tweet it out. Um, but far as I know of, it hasn't been collected in any one individual traits because it's a three issue series and it's crossing over with two other books. Um, again, uh, one of the big takeaways from this is Marco Tacheco's artwork. I was still, I mean, I love his pencils and have loved them since I was, my first exposure to him was on this Punisher book. Um, and when going back looking at it, reading this particular series, um, it was his artwork is was very reminiscent of um, Joe Casada to me. It was this very striking, different. It stood out above the other kind of art you were seeing at the time. Um, I loved also Greg Rucka and Mark Waite's take on these signature characters. Um, you know, are, are definitely one of my favorite, and uh, and I feel like they were truest to the the, the characters core that you know them as i think rucka rucka's punisher was one of the um like cleanest that i i know i mean i know everyone loves like uh the punisher max stuff i kind of like the punisher that operates within the the marvel universe proper and he's more analytical he's not so much of bloodthirsty kind of um you know, killing everybody to me is like some some of that. Um, uh, the Garth Ennis stuff is like violence for the sake of violence, and it's just too much. It's too over the top, and it doesn't do anything for me. I really liked Greg uh, Greg Ruckus' take 
and also um the run that preceded this as well with um i can't remember the writer's name but i always talk about it um uh, uh what's his name i hate when i do this give me a second because that's gonna bug the mess out of me if i don't look it up punisher um going through my collection on comiXology um who wrote those books so after Greg Rucka because that was 2011 to 2012 uh, what is this guy's name that wrote the follow up series Nathan Edmondson Okay, uh, Nathan Edmondson's run as well. I like their take on the on the Punisher character. I think it's truest to how he was kind of introduced to us way back in the day in, in the comics originally. I know you know the character has expanded, and you know um, you know the, the uh, Enos run kind of is what the um, Thomas Jane Punisher movies kind of loosely based off of and stuff. And people love that. I love this version of take on him and it's just written so well uh, and, and this these are the takes and Mark Wade's take on Daredevil um, or, or just to me or the the um, most truest form that I associate with each character um, you know now like this I said this isn't, isn't a very long story again it's three quick issues you can read this in one sitting easy um, so it's a simple plot and premise that's been used plenty of times before you, you know, tried and true, but it's just great writing coupled with stunning artwork that makes it worth the read for me. Um, uh, the ending to this crossover didn't have any definitive ending, uh, but was very, um, very fitting considering the, the, the characters involved in their, their, uh, relationships to one another. It fit for them. Um, I, this this show was I mean excuse me this story is just like a fun quick action adventure uh, I feel like it would have lent itself perfectly to adaptation uh, that would have worked perfectly um, on the Marvel Netflix shows oh I would this could have been perfect because I feel like it was just the right tone and darkness that would have worked good um, I, I I mean I guess they might would have had to switch out spider-man for another character to cross over maybe something like a jessica jones or something like that or or luke cage but they could have really um adapted this with a little bit of uh of um tweaking this i would have loved to have seen this as a crossover event on marvel netflix since daredevil and uh punisher was on there had shows this would have been a perfect crossover like little thing they they could have did on there or did a little movie that just involved the three characters, but you just, again, you just would have had to swap Spider-Man out, but they could have easily did this. And I would have loved to see it on that show with that budget that they had and the, some of the action scenes. Oh, I would have killed to see that. Um, but I would rec recommend this, uh, this um, mini series, mini series well, crossover. I would recommend this crossover for anyone that are a fan of either Spider-Man daredevil or punisher it's a like i said it's a fun quick read that you can get to and just really um uh, really enjoy and like i said it's just it's kind of like um i could equate this if i had to relate it to like a movie it's it's uh, kind of like watching a fast and furious movie but not that over the top i would say or maybe even like a john wick movie it's just fun action kick butt action um this is stunning to look at and just fun, like when I was done reading it, I was just like, that was a fun time. Uh, if I had to grade it on my grading scale, I would give it about an 8.25 out of 10. Again, not the deepest story. You've seen the kind of this trope used before in comics, a ton in movies, even more in television shows, what have you. We have something the bad guys want. We're going to use ourselves as bait to draw them out and then take them out. Pretty simple, pretty cut and dry, but still good stuff. Um, so that's my first long and short of it again this is the omega effect um that's all i really have for you guys for this episode i'm gonna be doing more of these um as time goes on i like i'll space them out so i try to i'll try to do at least once a, one a month i have some other um uh, stories that i like that i'm gonna recommend going in um coming in the future like i said i'll be spacing them out I already have some ideas on what the next episode the next couple are 
And um, I'll, what I'm going to do is try my best to reread everything that I'm going to cover so I can give you a good synopsis of it without hopefully not spoiling too much. So if you do seek it out and you want to check it out, that you can fully enjoy it without having the whole thing spoiled for you. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy. Let me know. You can always send me an email or hit me up. You can um, if you're part of the Facebook group and I'm going to always pimp this the Facebook group is uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the savant society all one word you can request to join once i get your request i'll add you on we talk about comics i um throw questions like this up um about like what kind of episodes you would like for me to do do you guys have any suggestions we just talk in general um different people will recommend books that they're reading that they're enjoying or ask for recommendations it's just good clean comics talking us getting to know each other and having a fun fun uh comic book conversations so definitely worth checking out or you can email me um comic book savant at gmail.com or if you go to the website comicbooksavant.com i have a contact us page you can email me directly from the website if you can't remember the email address let me know what you thought about this episode if you'd like to see more um or suggest any other type of uh new episode format you'd like for me to try out um, again, I'm just going off of, I have a ton of ideas, but I like getting suggestions from you like Paul gave me and you'll see from other people recommended different things as well, uh, that I'm going to enjoy trying out and see if you guys like it. And it's based totally on the feedback I get from you guys. That's why I always say, if you listen to any podcast or like you watch any YouTuber feedback is essential. You reaching out, telling a creator that you enjoy their work or, Hey, I like when you do this. Can you dig down more? Um, um, it can go a long way because you can turn it. You can see it turned in, into developed into something that's really good that you can enjoy and everybody else in the um, community can enjoy as well. So don't hesitate to do so. That can go a long way uh, into the content that you you end up consuming later. Or you receive later from that content creator. So it means a ton. Um, as always, if you guys like to support the, the, the content that I create, I have a Patreon that you can check out over at um, patreon.com forward slash comic book savant for a little as a dollar a month. You get access to a whole nother um, a podcast I do specifically for Patreon supporters and it's other goodies at different tiers as well. But you can go in as a little as a dollar a month. I know everything's crazy right now. So even if you came in at a dollar tier, um, it's one less comic that you're buying a month. Um, and you can get great content. It is literally, I've been doing the Patreon exclusive podcast for a couple of years now. So we're literally almost hundreds of more episodes, uh, right now, since you got some downtime for just a dollar a month, you get access to that feed. And you can have a whole bunch more content to consume right now, especially if you're going to start crazy, like I am, um, plenty to watch. If not also don't forget, um, I have the, um, Teespring store, have those t-shirt designs uh, that are really good. I have a Savant Society one and a couple of other cool designs that um, designer Eric Griggs helped me create. Um, so definitely check that out. If you go to the website, you can find the links to everything. Um, up in the navigation bar, you'll see for a store and it's t-shirts, it's hoodies, it's stickers, it's coffee mug. So it's um, little trinkets that you can buy that help support the show. All of it goes back into the show. No, it's a tough time not trying to push, you know, ram it down your throat, but it helps me keep creating the content that you guys are enjoying. So if you can, it would be greatly appreciated. But I understand if you can't with all the craziness that's going on in the world right now. Um, but again, that's all I have for you guys for this episode. As always, I'm your host, James Harris. This is the Comic Books of Mont podcast. Until next week, you guys stay safe and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.